a Trump administration plan that echoes the launch of the Trump re-election campaign this week. The Trump administration announcing this series of nationwide raids to happen this weekend to deport families inside the United States, slated for 10 major cities on Sunday, focusing on migrants who they say have already been ordered to leave the country by an immigration judge. Now, there is nothing new about a coordinated federal immigration raid. Every administration does deport unlawful immigrants. But the Trump administration's approach is different here in both scale and in its public thrust, including the president claiming he would remove, quote, millions of people. Now, today, the officials say at the DHS, the actual number is closer to the low thousands. Trump both claims he's cracking down, you hear that, but then in these new interviews, he also claims this is all the status quo, even name checking Obama as his inspiration. Now, we have a new interview we're about to show you. The, the bottom line here is that, yes, Obama did separate families on an individual basis. We should note that. Um, but as a factual matter, his administration never prioritized zero tolerance or family separation as a goal, like the Trump administration, which is why there are thousands of children taken from their families. With that context, because I'd like to show you the facts first, take a listen to this exchange from a new interview. The zero tolerance policy, was it a mistake? It's not a mistake. When I became president, President Obama had a separation policy. I didn't have it. He had it. I brought the families together. I'm the one that put them together. Under the Obama plan. Sir, we're talking about we had, no, your plan. I'm, no, we're not, because I'm the one that put people together. Okay. I, I just They separated. I put them together. Did, Under Obama, you had separation. Under a court order, I mean, right? No, I put them together. I inherited separation, and I changed the plan, and I brought people together. A few things here. First, note that for all the complaints and hype about attacking the press, Donald Trump now apparently does f face some sort of pressure and feels the need to square off with independent journalists as he launches this re-election campaign. That's why we have that exchange right there with Jose. It's a contrast to a governing period when he shut down all press conferences, every single one at the White House for months, and mostly stuck in personal interviews to friendly interviewers. Now, second, note that Donald Trump is pitching zero tolerance red meat to his base on the campaign trail and then what you just saw there he's pitching obama policies to the rest of the nation as if the two of them just sat together and built all these plans now that is a substantively muddled pitch but it's politically cunning and the campaign question is whether voters will learn that those things you just heard are falsehoods and will they care the fact is the obama administration had a strict deportation policy but it wasn't zero tolerance and it wasn't the same as Trump's. Just like the fact is that Donald Trump pledged Mexico would pay for the wall, and instead, you are. A fact that his 2020 communications director explained on this show last night with a new argument, claiming that Mexico isn't paying, sure, but in a way, in a way, maybe they are paying with a kind of a virtual currency. Mexico is paying a lot for our southern security, and that I, not would the wall. Be, I would call it a virtual wall. That's your closing argument. That's the closing argument. Trump's Justice Department, meanwhile, on defense, defending a losing case this week where they were ordered to provide detained migrant children soap and toothbrushes they're appealing so they can deny the migrants those basic means. I'm joined now by California Congressman Raul Ruiz, who's also an emergency room doctor spearheading a bill that would actually provide that kind of medical and nutritional care to people who are in detention. New York Times columnist Michelle Goldberg who's writing a story about this today, saying the family separation policy is not over. And of course, Swellenor her, herself, Eleanor Clift with the Daily Beast, uh, who's here for the serious news. And uh, I'm going to count on you later for Fallback Friday. Right. Um, but before we get to all that, we, we start with all the seriousness. Uh, Michelle, what do you think of the clear divided message that I'm trying to show everyone so people can make sense of it, um, which is zero tolerance for the base, Obama for the, the national other TV interviews? I mean, it's, it's not a message, it's just a lie. It's just a blatant, flat out lie. And that's sort of something that Trump often does, is he, on the one hand, wants to be seen as tough. He likes to revel in his own sadism. But he also, when he's speaking to certain audiences, you know, deep down, although he can't act in a way that makes himself loved, he wants to be loved. And he wants to present himself as kind of a good guy, even more of a good guy than Obama. But I think it's worth so you're saying he's human. noting that um, I think that the jury's still out on that. But I actually, 
I think that it's worth pointing out that although you remember it was exactly a year ago yesterday that he signed that executive order ostensibly banning family separation because there was such a national uproar. And what people in the field are telling me is that family separation never stopped. It's going on under, you know, there, there's, there is going on through a legal loophole. Some advocates worry that there's going to be as many as a thousand cases by the end of the summer. There was an Associated Press story yesterday about truly horrific, heartbreaking conditions of children being held for extended periods in really dirty, substandard um, care. The reason that those children are in, are being locked up, by themselves or with only other children to take care of them is because they are still being separated from their family members. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, I want to get to the bill I mentioned, the work you're doing. Uh, but before we do, what is your response to the claim by not only the, the Trump administration, but other folks who, who have a, you know, a harsh or strong view about deportation who say, look, uh, there was a lot of deportations under other administrations. It is a thing that happens. Uh, is there a particular concern that you see in these weekend's raids that are different? Absolutely. You know, while they're asking for money to help the children uh, and the humanitarian situation at the border, they're saying that they want to now separate families and add to more harm to the children that uh, that they're going to de be deporting their parents. So it, 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 it's it's. It's just a cruel attempt to rile up the base, to create fear, and, uh, and, and continue these cruel policies. Uh, and tell us about the work you're doing for what you say these individuals should get. In other words, and we talk about this a lot, a lot in migration as well as criminal justice, someone may be under detention, it may be lawful, uh, or they may be expelled under the, the rules of this country, but we still owe them certain things like due process and human rights. Uh, tell us about the work you're doing on that. Absolutely, Ari. You mentioned that I'm an emergency medicine physician. I'm a public health expert. I'm a trained uh, humanitarian. But more than that, I'm, I'm a father. And the conditions that I've seen the children at these detention centers were just so subhuman that it just tears your soul. And it really flips your moral compass of who you are as an individual and as a country. You see children without diapers, dirty, with mucus, coughing on each other in a room so full you could couldn't even see the floor in a situation where there's open toilets and freezing rooms where they're not really allowed to sleep overnight. It's like yeah. torture where they're being woke. You know what? So Listening to you say it, let me let you also hear something that we we reported earlier this week, but I want everyone to hear it, which was the pressure they got from the very conditions you just mentioned from federal judges uh, as the administration fights to continue to try to be able to deny uh, you know the toothbrushes, the blankets to children. Take a look. Are you really going to stand up and tell us that, that being able to sleep isn't a question of safe and sanitary conditions? It was so. And that sounds, though, that's part of uh, safe and sanitary. Are, are, you, are you disagreeing with that? If you don't have a blanket, it's not safe and sanitary. It, well, wouldn't everybody agree to that? You, do you agree to that? Well, I, I think it's, I think those are, there's fair reason to find that those things may be part of safe no, and sanitary. maybe are. Congressman. I introduced the bill, the humanitarian standards for individuals with CBP, under CBP custody, precisely to make sure that we codify a certain set of behavioral norms that will meet the basic humanitarian needs of women, children, families, and in situations of water, sanitation, food, uh, hygiene, as well as shelter, to, to basically ensure the basic conditions for a life with dignity. And we're not asking for much. We're asking for soap to wash your hands allow them to bathe daily let them sleep at night don't wake them up make sure that they have private toilets to use enough per certain amount of men and women make sure that there's enough space for them to just move their elbows make sure that they have a well-defined health screening within the first three hours for children pregnant women the elderly that consists of an interview vital signs physical examination and uh, an assessment and plan consultation with an emergency right. care uh, provider if there's any abnormalities. This will help prevent right. deaths of children and give professionalism and humanity back into a system that uh, and in an administration that lacks it. Yeah, and we wanted to include what, some of that work you're doing in our coverage since we've been looking both at the problem and also what, what some are putting forward as solutions. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for being on the beat tonight. 
Thank you. Thank I know you very much. Your time is, is limited. Uh, my panel stays, and, and Eleanor, turning to you. Um, Let's get over to the politics of it. We're 12 minutes into the broadcast, and we've uh, been solidly on the policy and the facts, which is important. Um, but it is politicians who make the policy, isn't it? Well, when you see Donald Trump out there, what do you see this week? Well, every president inherits the problems that are left over from the previous administration. And this president has taken these kind of chronic problems at the southern border with Iran, and he's made them worse. Uh, the numbers are up of people trying to come into this country. The cruelty is up. Uh, President Obama, yes, he targeted people who had felonies. He didn't go after hardworking families and try to break them up. And what this administration is putting out today ordering roundups of thousands of people is, is, is chilling. It's inflicting, it's terrorism on communities. And you, I, That's I, a strong word, you, you view it that I, way. I, I, terror is when you create fear among people, and I think, I think it's an appropriate use of the word. And I think you're going to see law enforcement not necessarily just line up with the president on this, um, that there is no such thing as an official sanctuary city, but there are law enforcement people everywhere who regard mm. the immigrants in their midst as as people they want to protect. So there could be some clashes uh, here. And I, I, I just don't want to live in a country where you're rounding up people. The language is is chilling and he's doing it right. because he won election that way and this is you know he thinks in television terms right. so this is a, a new episode and you gotta it's like 24 coming back and right. you gotta up all the uh, the, the confrontations up, in it. up the fire and fury I mean I think there are plenty of people and we've had them on this show who, who would disagree and object with the language you say but it is certainly the case as I mentioned in our in our introduction um, that unlike past administrations this doesn't seem like a law enforcement mechanism where you go out to do it to get the results right. you actually are hyping it on Twitter and then publicly for days which is not right. as we say normal and, and, luckily and we people don't are living in fear because right. of this Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.